<laughs> the power of Minecraft is strong with them. Hello and good evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jay and today we'll be taking a look at Cuman Cube Transformers. That's right, this is going to be part one of a three part review for this, for a set of six figures that came to me, well I ordered from Lazada.com. So if you want to order these, check out the description below. Well, <clears throat> without other way, let's get started. So. Here we have two of the animals, which is the Furious Orangutan King and Horned Dinosaur. Those are their actual names. We're going to be taking a look at both of them individually and then I'll give my final thoughts. So let's get started with the red guy. So here we have the Red Orangutan King. Now before we get into the figure itself, we are going to take a look at the box. Yes, they all come in boxes. So. Here it is. This is the, uh, the 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 orangutan mode. Looks nice. It has cannons. It's red. It has a bunch of white. Here's the cube mode, and inside there's a cube. So I just cube. At the bottom there is a uh, few warnings. Warning: You should not let little children play with this. And of course, as Mgo would like to notice at this little guy, I think you know who all this. Sa Man! I am terrible at this. <laughs> okay. Oh, at the back of at the back of the box, these are all the figures. Although the last one is uh, obscured by the sticker. This is number four one two zero two. We're going in Power Rangers order, in color order. If you had noticed already. <laughs> so let's get into the figure itself. Here it is in its, in its uh, cube mode. And I can see that this is inspired by the Botsu Sentai Chuhucha. <laughs> in many, many ways. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the front of it. Here's the side of it. Here's the other side. Here's the top of it. And here's the bottom. And then at the back you get giant face peeping at you just giant face peeping at you <laughs> uh, it kind of it's kind of in that pose that oh no something bad's gonna happen <laughs> uh, nice so let, allow me to lower the camera because things are gonna happen here so let's get this guy transformed now initial it's much more complex than what I originally thought let's just keep it at that so to start to transform it into his orangutan mode, you first flip up the head, which is the easy <clears throat> the easiest part so far. So you basically come come down here and lift up its head. And there's a ball joint at the base of the neck, which will allow you to raise that head up. And then there are these the pins at the back here will basically not let the head do will basically make the head look like something natural. You can if you want to position the head a bit lower, but uh, as for me, I would like to position it as it is in the box because it kind of looks the best. Uh, but if you want, you can also get peeping gorilla mode, which is simply the box, but with the gorilla head sticking out. <laughs> yeah. So, everything, so you're basically left with something that looks like a giant chair. Okay, so. What else should we do? So, at this point, you might as well flip out the side, the cannons, the arm cannons. Yeah. And then, V, then you want to grab onto the back of the arm here, and you extend it out, and you can already see how things are gonna, where things are going to go. So, then you raise the arm, you, you, you lift the arms up so that they are face, so that these parts are facing down. And then what you do is something I really didn't expect. You turn this part inwards and this whole thing will simply rest. You have to fold this part 
and then you have to position it as such like this so when you transform it you essentially just bring the thumb of the animal of the beast mode and and uh, it forms the thumb of the fit of the animal mode sorry about not working the, the thumb will basically be like this in box mode but it'll be like this in beast mode so yeah do this do the exact same thing for the arm yeah and then for the legs the legs are pretty simplistic as you might expect from a box former so you lift out the feet and then you extend the legs and you position them as such then you rotate the shoulder and get him into a into a orangutan-esque pose and now here we have furious orangutan king in his ape mode he looks he looks good albeit he he looks more he looks more like a gorilla than an actual orangutan especially with the way that you're able to pose him even even on the box, he's positioned and he even looks more like a gorilla than he is to a orangutan, which he's supposed to be. That's my only nitpick about this guy. Other than that is the fact that these, these the parts which are detailed, like the shoulders, and in fact, all of them have, st have stickers. It's not really a problem, it's more or less like something which I... A little annoying, but eh, no big deal. So, posability on this figure is very. Is, this guy has a lot of posability despite it being a box. <laughs> uh, this guy is much more superior than Debozu Sentai Troopers. <laughs> I'll make a separate video describing what I'm, what I'm talking about. So, posability wise, his head is on said hinges here, so he can look up that far. And if you want, you can look up that far and turn his head back. He also has another base set which allows him to... It's more like a transformation hinge, so that allows him. The balls right here allows you to position the neck like such. You can position it like this, or you can position it like this. It's all thanks to this ball joint. The ball joint in the neck. In the, the shoulders are on ball joints, although they are in a way which I really don't get why most people like to do it as such. Because, why don't you put this part, the one with the ball part, at the shoulder? Then you can have a big, better range of motion. It's a little mystery to me. But aside from that, there's no real problem. The arms are also on ball joints, so you can extend them and turn them. No real tor no torso artic articulation. The leg is on a ball joint, so you can get a unique position. So you can go down and go up there's and uh, his foot is on a hinge joint so you can get a good range of posing on this guy in the end i don't really have many complaints about this guy if i were to make up one complaint is the fact that he is called an orangutan he's he's more gorilla-esque than an orangutan that is my only nitpick that aside from that perfect it's perfect so let me get this straight you two are part of a series of cube transforming animals where have i heard that idea before now moving on to the yellow cube animal we can immediately see that it's a good it's a good looking cube from the front. But before we get to this, we should take a look at the box art. So the box art, his name is Horned Dinosaur. Very vague. That's one thing, that's one thing. The naming of these guys are just a wee bit either on the nose or the good. This is one which is on the nose. Speaking of which, that's his head. Big frill. 
cube mode. Cube mode, I don't know, cube by four piece A R I F. R F. Okay, weird. And then we get another chopped cube, and then later we get Sad Pac Man! Sad Pac Man! Everyone loves Sad Pac Man. Okay, I should mention top of the box. And again, we got the back of the box. This guy is number 41201. Yeah, this is the first one in the set, but I want to go in color order. So, in cute mode, Orange Dinosaur, or I should say Triceratops, I'm going to call him Triceratops from now on. Triceratops looks okay from the front. As a cube, he kind of looks a little wonky, especially from this side. I mean, on this side, he looks cool. It looks like some sort of triple king or something. Yeah, looks weird. So, transformation. Transformation-wise, this guy has a simpler transformation, but it's it, it can be a little obscured. So the first thing you want to do is move this component, the top of the box, or top of the cube, and then flatten it towards the ground. Now, I like to call this slab mode because it just makes it look like a slab, and yeah. Okay, so... What do we do? Okay, so then you move these parts out of the way. And at this point, you want to lift this component up. It, it will go back down, but after we do a few things with it. Now we're going to focus on this half of the slab first. So what you want to do is you raise up these components, which will be the horns, and then you, you turn them. I like to turn them so that they're both facing up so that when it turns you get, you get this. You can position these horns any way you want, it's your choice. Then you move these components, this is the hardest part believe it or not, and then you swing them so that they are behind the frill. This is the most difficult part of the transformation by far. And then you can angle the cannon bits. with me and, uh... okay so here we have the head of the triceratops mode as you might have guessed the whole body it the, everything else is formed at the back of here so the front leg it goes you swing the front leg forward you don't put it forward you swing it forward because they're on ball joints and the way they're designed, they're meant to, so that these golden bits face inwards. Golden bits, yellow bits. Everything is yellow. This guy's yellow. Then you take what will be part of the tail, and I, I kind of like this engineering. So you take these two components, and then this third component, this, this white, this third component. We'll get to this in a moment, but first you, at this point, you, you, you need to flip up the back legs. Then you, <laughs> you have to move this. You have to move this third component out, out of the way, and then you rotate the, the the these bits so that they face inwards and they face up. And then you take the tail bit and go down, and then you just smush them all together. And that's and there. We have a tail. And here is the horned dinosaur or triceratops. In his robot mode. So, this dino mode is very, very small. It's a triceratops, as you can probably tell. And yeah, it looks great. My, I do have a bit of a complaint with the figure, though, is that the fact that it's it, it the the top heavy. The, it's not top heavy. No, it's front heavy. This entire section is very heavy, so whenever I try to pose this thing, it will always somehow rock a little bit. That's my only minor complaint about this guy. And his name, Horned Dinosaur. Come on, Q-Man, you could at least give him a name. 
So, posability on this guy, well, he has less posability than the ape. I mean, the yeah, the ape, but I have to say it's quite, it's, it's unique. Let's just say it's unique. So, the head, his mouth can open. He can actually open his mouth. So he can go like, <laughs> okay. Then his horns. His horns are posable. Most of the posability on this guy is in the head. I forgot to mention that, but so. The horns are posable in the way that you can bend them down, you can bend them up, you can basically bend them in... in, in yeah, you get the point. Then, the frill itself can move forward. It can move forward, it can move back as part of the transformation. Then we get ball jointed back parts so this is on a ball joint this is on a ball joint so you can basically give him cannons that you can pose the cannons in ways that you that might seem a little wacky then at the back we get this double hinged neck so he can raise his neck up so that it can be even weirder than it already is he can bend down if you want that to happen so yeah now, the front legs do are on ball joints, but you have to move the neck upwards to utilize them. So, the front... Whoops, camera shake. So, the front legs can move out that far. And the back legs have more posability. The back legs can kick about that high. And if you want to use a... If you want to, you can just position them upwards. The tail doesn't have any posability at all, unless if you include this white piece going up and down slightly. But aside from that, that's all the posability on on this Triceratops guy. Overall, both of them are very good figures. Albeit they both require stickers and uh, their names are a little bit weird, but aside from that, they're perfect figures. I really like the red one a lot more than the than the yellow one though. That's just a personal preference of mine. Although I really do appreciate the fact that the yellow one has uh, horns and you can do a lot of stuff with the head. Well, I think that's it for the review. Or the first part of this review. That's right. It's still three parter, meaning there are still four more boxes more. So, I guess that I guess we'll conclude it at that. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention. And the guys at Q and Q Man, the company, is nice enough so that when they have the parts, if you break any other parts, there are still some spare parts. These are the spare parts for the Orangutan King. These are the spare parts, so you can basically replace an arm and two legs, or an entire shoulder if you're lucky. And if you're wondering, yes. The horned dinosaur or triceratops also comes with spare parts. I'm going to do something with these two spare parts. I just don't know what yet. So yeah. I really like these figures so much. They come at a very reasonable price. They each cost about 12 ringgit, but because it was on sale and it was in, 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 the, in the end of the year, they were both, they were 19 ringgit and 41 cents. So if you want to get these two guys, but, and you, if you want to spend $12, I suggest you spend on these guys. It's a very good price, especially on the red ape. Well, I guess that's it for the video review of these two. So if you want to check out part two and three of the review, which I'm going to be, of the review series that you're going to be making about Q-Man's cube animals, then I suggest that you like, subscribe, and comment on this video. Make sure you share this video with a friend and hit that notification bell for more well updates on my channel. And I think that's it. So this is Jay saying have a good afternoon and may the power of Minecraft be with you. It's from the opening gag.